that can of corned beef hash you wanted. Oh, thanks, Trix. It's awful nice of you to pick it up for oh, me. Sure. Say, Alice, have you done any marketing down at Krause's lately? Well, I guess so. Why? Well, Krause's youngest kid is working there now, and is he ever fresh? He thinks just because his father owns a place, he can say anything. Well, what happened? Well, I walked in there today, and I asked him, how much is your chop meat? And you know what he said to me? 58 cents a pound, sweetie pie. Gee, that is fresh. Why didn't you tell old man Krauss about it? I did. And you know what he said? Don't worry, I'll take care of it, honey. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, Alice, ever since the war, these butchers don't know how to treat a woman with respect. Oh, and speaking of someone not treating a woman with respect, my Ed will be home any minute. <laughs> oh, Trish. I got to get up there and cook some supper. Oh, Alice, I almost forgot what I wanted to ask you. Look. While Ralph and Ed are away on the raccoon convention, why don't you come upstairs and stay with me? Oh, thanks, Trix, but I already told my mother I'd stay over there with her. Oh. Gee, I wish just once the fellas would take us along on a convention. Oh, not that I care anything about those silly old raccoons, but it'd be nice to go to Minneapolis and get away from here for a while. Well, you can just forget about that, Trix. Every year we ask them, and every year they refuse. I know. I, I don't suppose I can force Ed into taking me. After all, he saved up his own money out of his allowance. He's got almost $50. No. How much did Ralph save? About 50 cents. <laughs> It'll be the usual thing any night now. He'll be coming home asking me to give him the money to go. But Alice, that puts you in the driver's seat. Don't give it to him unless he takes you along. Oh, no, Trix. I made up my mind. Ralph would rather not go than take me with him. Oh. And I've been able to save some money out of the housekeeping, you know, yeah. so... I figured he's been working pretty hard this year, and if this is his idea of fun, well, he deserves it. Well, all I know is if I were in your shoes, he wouldn't get the money unless I went along. Well, I'm sort of inclined to agree with you, Trix, but... No, I've made up my mind. I'm gonna tell him as soon as he gets home tonight. Well... Hey. Well, uh, Trixie, I figured you'd be down here. Why aren't you upstairs making my supper? Oh, Ed, I was just going up. Hey, Alice, why don't you come up with me? I'm going to call Mildred about the card game tonight, and with you there, we could settle everything. Oh, okay. Uh, if you don't mind, Alice, I'll hang around on the premises here and wait till Ralph gets home. All right, Ed. Uh, by the way, what is for supper? Chop meat. Oh. Oh, and that reminds me, Ed. What? You know that young Krause kid that's working downstairs for his father now? Yeah. Boy, has he got some nerve. I walked in there today and asked him, how much is your chop meat? Yeah. And you know what he said? What? 58 cents a pound. Sweetie pie. Boy, oh boy, you're not going in that shop again. I don't blame you for getting mad. What a nerve. 58 cents a pound for chopped meat. <laughs> and I was referring to him calling me sweetie pie. Well, what do you want him to call you? Love of lips, he hardly knows you. <laughs> Ed. Come on, Alice. Go, go, go. Oh, I just uh, set my watch. You mean to tell me you can look at the sun and set your watch? What do you mean, look at the sun and set my watch? I set my watch for the Chinese restaurant. It opens at 5 p.m. every day. You don't believe me, do you? I can tell by the, by the way that you're looking at me, you don't believe me. I could tell you with the time all night long just by that Chinese restaurant. For instance, they start cooking the egg foo young at 526. The first whiffs of that reach my apartment window upstairs at about 8, oh, 528. And they reach your window at about 527 and 56 seconds. There's a known fact that the aroma of egg foo young rises at the rate of 320 feet per second. <laughs> now, Mu Gu Gai Pan, which is of a heavier consistency, uh, travels upwards uh, at a slower rate. They start making that at about uh, 537. Sometime, somebody comes in, orders a family dinner, then I'm completely thrown. I don't ever know what time it is. <laughs> Wouldn't it be much easier if you bought a new watch? Oh, why? Nothing wrong with my watch. All needs a new uh, mainspring. I'll just get to find a guy to fix it. 
I think I'll write a, write a letter to Walt Disney tonight. <laughs> well, well, what do you got there? What? I stopped off at the novelty store and bought a few things to take with me on the convention. Oh. I'm telling you, Norton, I'm going to be a riot. <laughs> Get a load of this stuff. What do you got? Get a load of this. Now, this is a trick camera. How does that work? Well, you ask somebody if they want to have a picture taken, they say yes. And yeah. they start to pose, and then you just push the plunger, and they got a face full of water. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you got? Yeah? I got a box full of cherry bombs. Oh, they're great. You know the racket they make when yeah. they go off. Boom. <laughs> Here's a buzzer. You put it on your finger, you know. Yeah, yeah. Shake hands with somebody, yeah. they get a shock. Yeah. This will kill everybody. Yeah, sure. Oh, I bought a couple of false faces, too. Oh. I got one for you. This is oh. for scaring people. Oh, hey, look at, hey, hey, wait a minute. Let me see there. No, oh, I'd like to borrow one of these. No, I'll borrow this one here. See, because I want to wear one. Well, I want to wear it down the sewer tomorrow, you know, just for laughs. Uh, that one looks just like my boss, and uh, he'll, he'll get his feelings hurt. He'll think I'm making fun of him. <laughs> what else? Oh, what else? Here's a fake box of candy. Oh, oh. You know, you say, have a piece of candy to someone. Yeah. They grab the box and... <laughs> oh, that. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of subtle. I don't think they'll get it. They really come out of there, don't they? Yeah. Pick those up. Yeah. And here is the pH de resistance. What? These are just the right consistency. Bags for filling with water, dropping out of the hotel windows. Oh, boy. <laughs> hey, remember last year at the convention when the cops were cracking down on people, you know, that were throwing bags full of water out? Yeah. Didn't stop me none, boy. I just got the paper bag, fill it full of water, one, two, three, let it ride. <laughs> what happened? I almost drowned. The window was closed. <laughs> What were you doing at that figures? <laughs> well, are we going to have fun this year at the convention? A regular ball. Mm -hmm. Hey, I saved up some money. I know that. I got about 50 bucks. What about you? Well, uh, I haven't any money yet, but I know where to get some. Good day, sir. It's very nice to meet you. Wait a minute. I don't mean you, Norton. I'm going to get it from Alice. You're going to get it from Alice? Yeah. And I'm going to get it tonight, too. Look, every year you try the same thing. You ask Alice for money, and she turns you down. Well, she's not going to turn me down this year because I have a plan that can't miss. <clears throat> I've heard that phrase turned before. May 3rd, 1953. Ralph Cramden in search for money, for capital, to enter his no-cal pizzeria. <laughs> says, I have a surefire plan of getting the money. It can't fail. Alice Cramden says, no, unquote. All things are as they were then, except you are there. Oh, shut sure. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not gonna miss this time because I'm making the supreme sacrifice. What do you mean? Well, I figured it out. There's only one way for me to get the money. I'm gonna take Alice on a convention with me. You are what? I know how you feel, Norton, but what am I gonna do? It's the only way I can get the dough. I gotta take her with me. Oh, wait a minute. Well, don't, don't, don't ask, Alice, because if you do that, Trixie will make me take her. Well, I'll have Alice. But I don't wanna take Trixie. She was away with me once on a trip. Boy, she was on my neck all the time, nagging. I, I couldn't go bowling. I couldn't shoot pool. She just ruined everything. When was that? On our honeymoon. <laughs> I just got to do it, that's all. Hi, Ralph. Oh, oh, Ralph. Hi, Alice. What's all the stuff on the table, Ralph? Oh, uh, I uh, went down to the novelty store and bought this stuff for the convention. And uh, speaking of the convention, I got something I'd like to tell you. Oh, Ralph, I have something I want to tell you, too. I've oh, been wait. thinking the whole it'll thing wait, over... It'll wait until you, I tell you what I have to tell you. And is it a surprise? Ralph, what I'm going to tell you is going to be a big surprise to you, too. I don't now, care please, how big a surprise you. it is. What I have to tell you is going to be even a bigger surprise. Ralph. Please, sit down. All right, Ralph, what is it? Alice, I would like to have the honor and privilege of having you accompany me on the raccoon convention to Minneapolis this year. You mean you want me to go with you? <laughs> I don't mean anything else. But all those other years, Ralph, you never wanted to take me. That's when I made some of the biggest mistakes of my life. Man can't have any fun at a convention unless he takes his wife along. Right, Norton? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what is your answer? Are you sure you really want me to go, Ralph? What other reason could I have for asking you? Oh, then I'd love to go. All right, fine. Now, get the money you got hid so we can make the plans. <laughs> well, it's in the bedroom, Ralph. The top drawer of the dresser. Oh, all right. Say, what was the big surprise you were going to tell me? Well, I guess it's not so much of a surprise now, Ralph. You see, then I didn't know that you wanted me to go to the convention with you. But I'd already decided to give you the money to go to the convention by yourself. Oh. 
What? <laughs> I'd already decided to give you the money to go to the convention by yourself. Oh, we're going to have such a wonderful time, Ralph. I tell you what, I'll go in and get the money, and you sit down here and figure out exactly what we're going to need. Well, we're going to have a lot of laughs at this convention with the wives along. I have a feeling that uh, I may replace you as poster boy during National Nut Week. <laughs> Will you tell me one thing, please? How do you get us into these fixes? Very simple. Very simple, Norton. I have a big ball! <laughs> It's up a tree and lower tree. trying to do? Give me a heart attack or something? <laughs> Running in here wearing that mask? Have no fun, that's all. I want to try it out. All way. right, have fun. But wait till we get to Minneapolis. We'll be there tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, another thing. What? What happened to you in the station? I looked all over for you. Oh, I stopped at a, uh, uh, one of those uh, novelty counters there in the station. You know, I got some more stuff. Oh, I got a lot of good stuff. You know. <laughs> well, never mind that. Where are the girls? Huh? I say, where are the girls? I don't know. I thought they were with you. What do you mean with me? I left them in the coffee shop. Oh. Well, I don't know. They're on the train. They're probably looking for us. Well, we have nothing to worry about. They got the tickets. They know where the birds are. Certainly. <laughs> Let's get rid of the bags. <coughs> what time is it? Uh, quarter. Uh... <laughs> Come on, stop. the train is getting hey, ready stop. to leave. It's stop. I don't know what time. Well, ask somebody and find out what time uh, it is. Conductor, yes, pardon sir? me. Are there any Chinese restaurants in the state? Will you? <laughs> We'd like to know what time it is. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, just about 11.15. We'll be pulling out any second now. You... Pulling out any second? Wait a minute, the conductor. Yeah. Did you happen to see our wives as you were coming through the train? Mine is a red-headed one, his is a blonde. Mine is wearing a checkered coat, and his has an imitation dyed rabbit fur coat on. <laughs> no, sir, I'm sorry I haven't seen them. Hey, they're liable to miss this train. Hey. They don't get here in a second. We're a cinch to miss them. <laughs> well, maybe they're on one of the other trains. Hey, wouldn't that be terrible? They'd have to wait until uh, <laughs> tomorrow night to get another train to Minneapolis. That would give us one whole free day at the convention. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be terrible? Yay! <laughs> hey, maybe they did really miss it. What are you worried about? The worst thing that can happen is they get the train in tomorrow night from Minneapolis. They got their own tickets. I guess you're right. Well, let's get to bed, Norton. Yeah. Hey. Because tomorrow starts about five days of hilarity. <laughs> you know, these conventions are certainly good. You know, they give you freedom. Let yourself go for a couple of days. I know, I know. Live it up. <laughs> That's what I like. Real, unbound fun. Good clean fun. Exactly. <laughs> well, let's get a good night's sleep. Hey, look, 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 look. Get a little deep. <laughs> <laughs> well, what fun I'm going to walk along the street in Minneapolis, see? I have tapped somebody on the shoulder and said, pardon me, they look around to see who it is, and I go, boo! We <laughs> see those, huh? Very much, besides. They're all right at that. Give you a good effect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> They're okay. Well, I got a lot of stuff there. Yeah, I wish I had a pair of these. Well, take them, I'll get another pair. 
I know the guy that makes them. Thank you. I got uh, these uh, rubber marshmallows. You know, the trick kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> got these here uh, trick handcuffs. <laughs> hey, is that Alice? Where? No. No. Oh, I what did you say you had? Oh, these trick handcuffs. You know, you put them on your wrist, see? Then you get at them without using no key. You just go like this, you go, boom. You right at them. Well, that doesn't sound like a great deal of fun to me, sitting in a hotel room all day going, boom. No, no, you don't get the idea of it. I put it on one of my wrists, see, like this. Now watch. Then you get out here. See? No key, no key. Then I go up to some other fellow and I say, let me have your wrist, please. And I put it on like this. See? Now I let it go on there for a while. We're yacking it up a little. Pretty soon he gets a little panicky, you know. He's wondering, well, uh, let's get him off. So I start looking for the key, you know, like there's a key to it. But there ain't no key, you know. So I'm looking all over. And then he gets real good and panicky, you know, because he's handcuffed him. So I'm starting looking when he gets real scared. Then I just go, boom, and they're off. <laughs> and that's supposed to be funny? Oh, yeah. Personally, I think the bulging eyes are much funnier than the handcuffs. You do? Now, would you mind saying boom and let us get out of here? All right. Boom! <laughs> Come on, say boop and get me out! Boom, boom! <laughs> You're not boomfing right, Norton. <laughs> I'm boomfing right. Watch out the way you boom. Let's do it together now. One, two, three, boom! <laughs> All right, I had enough of the boomfing. Now get the key out and open them up. There ain't no key. You gotta boom your way out. <laughs> I'll bump you out of the whole car! Oh, come on, bump me out of it! I don't understand it. I work with a clerk. That's the thing with one, two, three, bump, and we're out of it. Just wait a minute. Just be calm. Take it easy. Have a marshmallow. Thank you. Get your foot out of there, Norton. Get it out of there! Get your foot out of there! I can't get it. Now look, Norton. I'm going to give you one more bump. Then you better get me out of these handcuffs. All right. One, two, three, boom. All right, that's all. Now look. Let's get to bed. When we get to Minneapolis tomorrow, we'll get a hacksaw and we'll get out of the handcuffs. Okay. Guess we'll have to... Yes, we'll both have to sleep in the bottom berth. Get those bags out of the way. Why does this have to happen to me? Get in there. Sleeping with a jacket on, I'd like to take off. Why does this always have to happen to me? Just have to sleep with our jackets on. Now get in there! Right. Wanna give it another boom? Get in there. Now watch out for my teeth. Yes. What is it now? You, you mind if I sleep on the outside? I don't like to sleep on the inside. I got claustrophobic. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Now climb over slowly. Well, 
my coat. <laughs> now, will you go to sleep? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> well, all right. What do you want, Martin? I, uh, I can't sleep on my back very well. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! You can't sleep on your back? Oh, I can't. Get up there. Get up! Yeah? Get up! <laughs> Get on your stomach. Hey, <laughs> look. Never mind. <laughs> Reach up a little. Oh. Uh. Hey, <laughs> I wonder where the girls are. I wonder if they really missed the train. You know, if they did, I'm glad they did, because if they were along, they'd be nothing but trouble. <laughs> you shut up and go to sleep. <laughs> Ralph? What? Mind if I smoke? I don't care if you burn. <laughs> uh, do you have a cigarette? No, I don't have a cigarette. Uh, there are some in one of my suitcases right underneath your bunk. Would you mind getting me one? All right. Get down. Huh? Get down. Down. Get down. down. Get down. All right. Get under there. Get him out. Yeah. Get him out. Sure. Hurry up. Yeah. All right. Now, I want to ask you a question. All right. You got the cigarettes? Oh, yeah. All right, now. I want you to go up there. But before you go, I want to know a few things. Are you thirsty? No. Are you hungry? No. Everything's fine? Sure. Okay, now that I've asked you that, get up there. Get up there. <laughs> Good night, Martin. Good night. I forgot to ask me one thing. Did I want a match? Go! Get out! This is the end! Gentlemen, what seems to be the trouble? What seems to be the trouble? I'll tell you what the trouble is. First of all, he makes my wife and his own wife miss the train because he can't keep an eye on him. Then he gets in here, puts handcuffs on my wrist. That isn't enough. I ask him if he wants a drink of water. No. I ask him if he wants something to eat. No. He doesn't want anything until he gets up there and then he wants a match. And on top of everything, I got to be handcuffed to this idiot all the way to Minneapolis. <laughs> Minneapolis? But gentlemen, this train isn't going to Minneapolis. We're going in the other direction, to Norfolk, Virginia. 